Hello, this is Cuckoo. Today, I've been looking forward to this day. This. This is the Zoya by Empress Effect. It's a, a little box in a guitar pedal format, but it can be so much more than a typical guitar pedal. In fact, this is a modular system, digital modular system. You can put little modules out here on this grid, flick through different pages, set, put more modules there, connect them together and create your custom effect, custom instrument, custom sequencer. It can be a lot of things actually. And coming from a, uh, a company like Empress Effect, uh, they have a, a really good backlog uh, of understanding of effect, how good reverbs work and like amp simulation and stuff. So there are, uh, there are modules in here that, that take advantage of that. So, so it's very easy to just make a reverb pedal. Uh, in fact, that's the first thing I want to show you is how to make a reverb pedal. pedal. Yeah, but if you want to, you can go full on modular and, you know, uh, create something like this. Uh, it takes a bit of understanding and, and, you know, you need to know which uh, modules are in here and how to use them and so. But you can do some fairly advanced stuff with just this one pedal. And so this is going to be like the first introduction to how to use this pedal. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make a simple effect and how to make a little synthesizer respond to a keyboard and, and maybe even a little sequencer and see how that works. So cool. Let's do this. Yeah, so here it is, the Zoya. Hello, this is me. Uh, so there we go. This is the Zoya by Empress Effects. Let's turn it on. There is no switch. It's only the power. That's typical, typically how uh, uh, guitar boxes work. So there you go. It's booting. It takes a couple of seconds and boom, it's on. So the first thing I want to do is just select a free, uh, uh, like an empty patch. I'm going to go here, start turning this knob, go into something here, over here, maybe this. Yeah, it's a empty, empty patch. Let's build a little patch and explain along the way uh, how it works. Press anywhere in an empty space to put a module out there. A module is something that could be uh, anything from reading uh, the input port and uh, seeing what audio is coming in, or it could be an effect, it could be uh, different things. Let's, let's monitor the input signal, shall we? I've connected this. Yeah, this is a drum machine uh, from Teenage Engineering. I like it. Uh, right now we could hear it, right? We could hear this. I, I'm going to exit this by hitting the back button. It's a totally empty patch, yet we could hear it. Why is that? Because it's in bypass mode. If this is red, it means that it's in bypass. If I press bypass, doosh, we'll, we're not hearing the actual patch, which is totally empty, so no sound. But as long as it's in bypass, it's just bypassing, uh, the, the audio coming in here is just routed straight out to here, yeah. So we, we want to hear the patch. Let's build a patch from scratch here. Okay, first of all, press somewhere. Um, it's now assuming that we want to put out the module here, and it's exactly what we want to do. So we can put it out here or here, or, you know, whatever we want. When we've done that, it says select category, uh, interface module, audio module, uh, control modules, analysis, effects. I want to do an interface module. Interface is typically what's, what's the what the hardware can do, anything with the hardware. I want to see what's coming in here. Okay, At the top of the list, audio input. That's what I want. What can I do with it? Uh, do you want it to be blue? No, I want it to be magenta. Uh, do you want it to be stereo? Yeah, I do. Done. Press. Okay, so let's play it now. Just by playing it, we can see that this is starting to flash, right? It's indicating that there is a level coming in there. 
let's press it and see. Yeah, we can actually see the, the, the audio there. Good, we're making progress. <laughs> so if we want to hear what we, what we have there, we need an audio output as well. So let's put an output somewhere here. Just press it. Interface module, yeah, it's a hardware, right? So it's something that interfaces with the hardware. So, okay, all the output is right there in the list. Uh, so what do we want this? It's white, do you want that? No, I want it to be blue. Gain control of, actually, oh, gain control. That could be something that's handy. If you're paying attention now, I'm putting out the module Initially, it had just two little dots there, two connection points. By, um, by setting this to on, I'm now uh, there is an option to, to have another uh, connection point. So it grows, it grows. I'm, I can change the modules. Uh, I can select sometimes what kind of inputs and outputs they should have. Okay, done. So, uh, we've got we've got this output module, and just by pressing, you can investigate what the different connection points are. Input left, input right. I'm gonna play it. How about this? Output left, output right, and gain. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook these up now, but it could be a good idea to keep the volume low uh, because you you. Maybe you aren't sure about what the level is coming in, and then you might be having a shock while you know listening to something and sending it out to the speaker. So I just you see what I did there. I just press this, and there is a value slider here, and I change the value. Cool. So minus ten ish dB. Now I'm going to connect these. The audio input is going to connect it to the audio output by just pressing the two. Yeah, as easy as that. If there are connections that can be made, you just press the two together. One, two, and the connection is there. If you, if you want to deselect something, you press this back button, like that. So nothing is selected now. Cool. So if, if we want to apply a reverb to this, uh, let's find a reverb. I'm gonna put it here somewhere. A reverb is an effect, right? So I'm gonna go down to the effects modules, press it. Got tone control, EQ, fuzz, compressor gate, reverb. Okay, room reverb. Let's put a room reverb there. What can I do with that? Nothing, it seems. Um, no options. But a reverb, green, no. I think the reverb is kinda magenta. Okay, so. First thing you do when you put out a module, investigate it. Input left, input right. Uh, decay time, uh, low EQ, uh, low pass filter frequency, mixer. Okay, so this is gonna mix the dry signal with the reverb signal, okay. Uh, output left and right, cool. Now we have a, a view of what it can do. <laughs> so how do we connect that? Well, the same. Same as the other. Uh, press them together. Remember, this is the input left, right. Input right. Press it to connect. So we can see now, just by pressing the audio input here, we can see that there's a connection here. There is also a connection there. This one, connection here, and also there. So it's sending the raw signal straight out to the output without any, um, without any processing. But here it's going to be processed, and that might take uh, like a little cycle or something. I'm, I'm not sure how many samples it will take in time for this to process. But chances are that the, the raw signal that is mixed here is going to be slightly delayed when it reaches this point. Because this is like one, one little... Um, uh, yeah, one module in the middle there. So it might be slightly late coming here. We'll see what happens. Okay, so output, I'm gonna send this to the same output here. So this becomes a mixer, essentially, sending numerous sounds to the same outputs here. 
Okay, let's play it. If you if you have a keen ear, you, know, you can hear both the reverb, but also some of that phasing that I was hinting about. This module takes like a, a sample or two, I don't know, to process, and then well the raw sound in this module reaches here uh, it it comes here a bit later than this so that's why we can hear this little phasing kind of sound if i turn this mix here on the reverb all the way to the left this way we we're only going to hear the, the uh, dry sound here and play it now Sounds a little bit weird, right? It, because because it's uh, uh, it's coming in a little bit later, so we don't want that. And this is good to keep in mind because uh, if you have the the dry signal here, you don't want the dry signal here as well. You want the totally wet signal. So you're gonna control uh, the dry and the wet signal uh, separately, in my opinion. So let's turn the mix all the way to the to the right. So now everything coming from the reverb signal is just going to be the reverb. No copy of the dry signal there. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, it's a bit loud maybe, the reverb. Uh, we could tackle that in numerous way. One way is to select the reverb output and the connection to, to the output, to the main output. And once you've selected something like that, you can see here that, okay, it's sending the audio, but to what extent? You can actually lower uh, the volume there. So it becomes like a little mixer. So like minus 10 dB or something. And now we could raise the main volume. It's a nice reverb, right? Let's try the let's try to make it longer. Yeah, how about that? Cool. So one thing I'd like to do is to momentarily send to the reverb when pressing this. Can we do that? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, so we need a couple of, we need to reconnect stuff a little bit and introduce a few more uh, modules. I'd say we connect this audio input, not straight to the reverb, but via, via, uh, through um, a VCA, voltage control amplifier, I guess. Uh, that's a, a volume control. So if we connect this, let's put, I'm going to show you what a VCA is. Okay. Uh, interface, no, it's an audio module. Oscillator, no. VCA, there it is. Uh, if you don't know the terminology, just, yeah, get used to this word, VCA. Let's see, do we want one in, one out? No, we want stereo. There you go, stereo. So this is a stereo VCA now. Audio input, investigate the module. Audio input, audio input two. Level control. This is where the where we can control the audio uh, coming through. Uh, to what extent we want to send it on. Okay. So these are the audio output one and two. So what I want to do is to take this sound, doosh, doosh, connect it to to this one and then send this one onto here. But I also want to, you know, break these connections now because I don't want to do it this way. If you want to break a connection, press the connection, both of them, then press shift and trash can. So I want to delete this connection, press both of them to select, shift and trash. Okay. So now the sound goes from here into the VCA and from the VCA to the reverb. Okay, 
And now the magic trick is we're going to control this with this stump switch. So where's the stump switch? Let's put it here. Let's see. It's an interface, right? This is hardware, so it's an interface module. So um, interface, select, uh, it's, let's say, MIDI stump switch. There we go. Uh, okay. Blue, that's okay. Stump switch, left. Yeah, that's the one we want. And do we want it to be momentary or should it stay? Maybe it should stay. Let's press it. Select latching instead. Done. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, it stays on. Yeah, this is good. So now we want to connect this to this. Now let's take a little moment here. So if we investigate this now and I press this, we can see here a value changes. Zero dot zero 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 one dot zero zero zero. So by pressing this, we're changing a value from zero to one. And modulation and modulus, it's all about sending values to different destinations in order to control different modules. So now this little mini module is going to control this module uh, and particularly this input. So let's do that. Press and press. Connect it. Doosh. So let's see if it works, shall we? No reverb. I'm going to press this. Reverb, yeah. This is nice. This is good. Now, I want to introduce a little, uh, like a, um, when, when you're doing it modulus, you might be thinking in kind of, um, ways to make stuff work for you. You know, you have to be inventive sometimes. So now I'm thinking, well, ha first of all, let's save it. Uh, hold that thought. Uh, I'm going to save this by pressing this little floppy disk icon. For everyone who is old enough to know what this is, it's a disk. Okay, we save on this stuff. So shift and press in order to access these icons. These are functions. Shift and floppy. So now we've saved it to patch 34. However, 34 doesn't have a name. Let's name it as well. When nothing is selected, deselect just to be sure by pressing the back button. If nothing is selected, you can use this little icon here. Edit. So shift and edit to edit the patch name. I'm going to call it... Um, yeah, I don't know. Room. Room. You see what I did there? There is a keyboard here, if you can read it. Um, yeah, so press this. It's OK. Save again. So now I've given the patch a name, which is good. Cool. So uh, I already forgot what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. We need to make it work for us. We need to be a little bit inventive. I want to have access to um, three different sort of uh, lengths of reverb and use that in a performance. This could be nice. Um, yeah, this could be nice. Instead of going into the reverb and doing this, I mean, of course I could do that, but wouldn't it be cool if I had like three buttons and whenever I pressed the button, I went between different lengths of reverb. Let's do that. We can do this. Uh, we just need to be a bit inventive. So I'm going to put out something here called a keyboard. Now, what is, is that an interface? Maybe. I, I'm not sure. Actually, let's look for it. Push button, keyboard. Yeah, there we go. Keyboard. Doosh. Now, I want to have access to three different values that I want to send to the reverb uh, decay time. So let's go down here to the keyboard and say, yeah, I want 
three different notes here in this keyboard and done okay so this green thing here is a keyboard now I can see I'm sending the note E D and C in this case I don't really care about the notes so I care about the values so I'm gonna exit kind of the note um, the, the note view by pressing this sometimes by pressing this you can enter different viewing modes so on the keyboard you you exit the notes value kind of viewing mode and instead you're in this uh, yeah zero to one uh, view so this one I want this one the first one to be short short value I want the second one to be a like medium value and the third one's going to be like a very long value so now when I'm pressing this I'm sending this value out in some of some of the ports here let's see which one it is this one is the note output so that's the one we're going to use this is a gate output and this is a trigger output okay this is the one we're going to send so we're going to send this to um, decay time okay connect these two so this by pressing this the decay is now well actually I'm going to lower the decay to minimum there so that there is no offset in from the value coming here I want the exact same value this is a longer value this is a yeah just checking that the value is actually sent there okay Let's try it. Yeah. Also, if there is a super long, uh, I mean, now we've made our own little module work for us. We've been a little bit inventive to to find a way to store a sort of preset here, three different presets like short, medium, and long reverbs that we can instantly jump between. Maybe there's a part of a song where we really want to blast it with a very long uh, reverb. Uh, in another part, we want it really short. Sometimes we want it on, sometimes it should be off. If it's a really long reverb, it could be cool to just punch it in. Yeah, nice. I'm going to save this. Doosh, saved. Another thing I want to do now, I just want to try out the dry signal. I don't want it dry. I, I, I'm going to see if I can make it... Um, yeah, processed in some way or another. Okay, let's try. Let's try something out. I'm gonna press a free space here. I'm gonna go to effect modules and see what's there. Tone control is basically EQ, um, delay, ping pong delay, fuzz, OD, overdrive. Yeah, maybe overdrive would be cool. I'm gonna see what's down here. And we'll have ring modulate cabinet simulation. Yeah, let's try that. Cabinet. So I want it to be stereo. And uh, okay, there's different types here. I have no idea what these. Okay, four times twelve full. Okay, let's try that. Done. So this is a cabinet simulation. So instead of sending this raw signal straight out to the, the output I'm going to delete that connection um, still we got the reverb yeah but I want to send it through this um, cabinet simulator and send it out to the op out output can't really do anything with that simulator um, simulation so it's just it's it's a 
I could have made a mixer to mix that sound with a, a dry sound and kind of select how much of that I wanted. Yeah, I like it. You know, I think the volume kind of uh, was a bit lower when going into this through this module. So what I'm gonna do is to raise the volume a bit in the, one of the connections here. Maybe boost it 2 dB. Now you can hear a difference in the sound coming through this uh, and the sound is going into the reverb is actually um, the clean sound. So let's change that too. So connect it, delete the connection, delete the connection, take this sound instead going into the uh, VCO there that controls the volume. Okay. Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? This is cool. So, um, so what next? Yeah, let's make a synthesizer. Uh, we can start from scratch if we want to do, uh, but I'm gonna see if we can build a synthesizer at the same time as this is being processed. So what I'm gonna do now is go to a different page. I just flick through the pages like this. You can have as many pages as, as you want, I think. Page two. Oh well, page one. This is page zero. So page one is gonna be a synth, a little synth. So how do you kind of control that? Well, I'm gonna control it with a keyboard. And uh, it, it's, yeah, I'm gonna control it with this keyboard. It's a um, Arturia key step. And the MIDI is gonna to have to be converted into this cable. And this is the kind of input. There are different standards. The MIDI Association, they have decided on a standard now, but up, up until, I think, uh, August 2018, there were different standards for this. So if you have a cable like this and it doesn't work, it might be a, a, another standard. Okay, I'm gonna put it here into the MIDI input. So we got a keyboard. Let's see if it works, shall we? Now, Instead of reading the audio info, we need to, to read the, the MIDI. So let's see if we can find a MIDI module here. So um, it's an interface, right? This is hardware. So interface module, um, audio, MIDI notes in. Yeah. And MIDI channel one. Yeah, okay. How many? Let's do a mono. It's easier to handle. Okay. Done. Let's see if we, yeah, we instantly get a reading here. This is set to channel one, and we instantly get stuff happening there. Let's check the module, investigate it. Yeah, we can see different, um, different values there. It's reading it fine. This is the gate. It, it reads whether there is a, a key that is pressed or not. Yeah, so all good. Another thing we want in order to make a synthesizer work is something that generates sound. Let's put an oscillator here. Audio modules, oscillator is on the top. An oscillator generates audio. And an oscillator could be many different waveforms, a sine wave, square, triangle, sawtooth. Okay, let's make a square. Mm. I'm going to create an audio output on this page as well, just uh, because it's easier. So, um, interface module, audio output, and I'm also going to have 
a um, gain control. I'm going to put the gain down because it's going to be loud in the beginning here. Okay, so oscillator output. I'm going to write it here. Ooh, we got an oscillator. Yeah, so we have an oscillator, right? And it, it generates sound. I'm going to tune the frequency down and instead of setting the frequency manually like this, I'm going to let the keyboard set the frequency. So we had a frequency converter here, like that note is going to convert to frequency. So the frequency of the oscillator, the frequency of the keyboard, connect them. Okay. Yeah, we have a synth. <laughs> it's like the first, the most simple of synths. And, uh, but rather than having something just be on, it'd be nice if, uh, if, it, if I could play it and then release it to stop it, right? A crude way of doing that, like the simplest and most crude way to do it, would be to have uh, a VCA, audio module, VCA again, volume controller, and one in and one out, that's fine. And then have the gate control the volume. It's like the simplest and most crude way to do it. So instead of connecting this to the output, I'm going to break that. I'm going to break the other. I'm going to connect it to the VCA, and then the VCA is going to be connected to the output. And this is the volume control of the of the, the VCA, which is going to be controlled by the gate of the keyboard module. So now we've got a little synth there. Let's press play here. having fun, right? I'm gonna save this. Yeah, we're making progress, right? Yeah, this is fun. Okay, I want to explore if I can make if, use of these perhaps. So let's, I'm gonna investigate the, the, the oscillator there. It currently we only got frequency and audio output. Let's investigate. Select the module, shift and change or edit. So we're going to see here, we got a square FM input, cool, duty cycle, cool, maybe it's duty cycle. It's going to see if it grows now. Yeah, there's one more, one more connection point there. Duty cycle. That, do you know what that means? Nick bat. It means we could do pulse width modulation. So let's see what we could do here. There we go, due to cycle. Yeah, nice, nice. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is try to, to read this. Um, this is the keyboard. Let's investigate if there is one more MIDI module, MIDI notes, MIDI CC. I think this is a um, modulation wheel, mod wheel. It should be CC1, let's see. I'm gonna press it, MIDI channel one, controller, CC message one, I think. Done, okay, let's see. Ooh, yeah, yeah, so now, if we connect that one to the duty cycle. Yeah, nice. It's doing a little bit too much there because it's going from zero to one here, but here we're in the middle. So either we go to zero there. Nice, okay.
I'm wondering if it's if the jute cycle is active on all of the waveforms. Okay, so oscillator, uh, edit. I want to see what the jute cycle does on the sine, for instance. Wow, yeah, that's really nice. Let's use that. Cool, cool. I'm gonna say that. So uh, I wanna I wanna come to this point where I have two oscillators and I do FM between the oscillators. Let's do that. So this is an oscillator in VCA. Let's put another oscillator. Uh, uh, audio oscillator sine wave FM in on. So now it's got an FM input on the second one. So let's see, investigate the modules. Okay, uh, frequency, FM input, output. Cool. I'm going to do a VCA on that one as well. Audio module, VCA. Yes. I'm going to be connected there. Hmm. So instead of letting this one going straight to the mixer, I'm going to break that. So I want this oscillator to control the FM input of the second oscillator. This oscillator going here. I just, for now, I'm controlling it in such a crude way. Just on off. And then I want this to go out. Okay, and then I want the the frequency to control both of the oscillators and this connected to the VCA this is to the outputs yeah Ooh, it's loud Ooh, this is this is powerful wow okay now, this is kind of, in FM synthesis, you call this the carrier. This is the last operator in, in, the, uh, in the connections, the one that is being modulated. And this, this is now the modulator. I'm going to change the pitch, the frequency of the modulator in relation to the carrier. Actually, I need to lower the volume. to that. been saying now that it's this is a crude way of handling the volume like following the gates of the keyboard let's do it with with an envelope an envelope is something that changes volume over time as you press a key you can gradually increase the volume and then it lands on something called a sustain level and then when you release it you can let the tone diminish over time let's introduce that here I'm gonna place a an envelope here and that is a control module okay up here is something called ADSR if you don't know what it is it's very difficult to to know by just reading it ADSR means attack decay sustain release it's just something you need to to remember so yeah ADSR there and we're going to use it for, I'm going to use two of them actually, ADSR, one for each, uh, uh, for each operator. Okay, now this is important. This module is one, two, three, four, five. It's like uh, six uh, connections long. But down here, there wasn't space for that. One, two, three, four, five. Because this one is in the way, but it, it's still there, but it's just, we can't reach to the 
uh, and the, the last one, uh, we could we could do that by moving stuff around. We can, for instance, move this a little bit out of the way. Press it, press Shift and Move, the Move module, and just move it slightly to the side there. Now we can access the last one. So you can actually you can fill this up with much more modules than there is room for. They could sort of just cut them, cut off each other visually, but they're still there. Okay. So we want both of the envelopes now to start doing their uh, note react, like note envelope, every time the gate opens. So let's see it. Gate input, yeah. Um, and then we want the output of every um, uh, envelope to control the VCA instead of the gate. So I'm going to con disconnect the gate that is controlling the VCA. Dish. This the gate is controlling the VCA. Instead, I want the envelope's output to control the VCA, both of them. Okay, so what I want now is the modulator, I want that to grow slowly. So attack, slow attack, slow decay, maybe even a low sustain, and perhaps even a very short release. I'll make the attack even slower. I want more of that FM effect. So what's coming out here and is being sent to the FM input here, I want that to be a much higher volume. Maybe even the attack could be... Maybe the decay. You can see that this is flashing red sometimes. That means that there is a clipping going on there. I don't mind in this modulation uh, type of sound. You know what I want? I also want this, where is it? This one, to modulate the, the frequency. That's going to make it really gnarly. So let's do that. Maybe a, little, a bit less. Uh, it's getting a bit technical, right? But this is the nature of modular. The more modules you put out there, the more stuff it is to uh, keep track of. Cool. Yeah, let's save this. Save it. Cool. You know, on the previous page, we have a reverb, right? It's right there. And we have this, this little button to send to the reverb. How about using this button to, to send the synth to the reverb? Let's do that. So what we need to do in order to, to make that happen... Um, gonna make a sort of a, a push button again, but instead we're going to use this one. Uh, however, before we do that, we're going to have to understand that these two are reserved by the system. This is the bypass. We can still use them, but we just need to do something first. If you press these two together, this turns blue. When this is blue, we can access these as, as, as stomp switches in the patch. When, they're not, when, when it's not blue, 
Uh, these are reserved by the system. So let's turn it blue. Doosh, now we've got three stomp switches here. Okay. So I'm going to make a new stomp switch on this page. Let's see. Uh, interface, MIDI stomp switch, and green, yeah. Not the left one, but the middle one. We want it to be latching. Done. Okay, so now this one is accessible on this page. The previous page, we have the blue one, right? So now we've got the stomp switch here. Uh, it's going to use it for, for reverb on this sound. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> so let's put a VCA here. Audio modules, VCA. And yeah, let's connect this stomp switch to the VCA volume control like that. Yeah. And then we're going to send, we're going to tap the audio from this. It's coming through this VCA, right? It's going straight out to the output. Going to send it to this VCA, which is following this rule. And then we're going to send this to the other page. So how do we send stuff between the pages? Let's pay attention now. When a connection point is selected, and I select another page, you notice that these turn yellow when we uh, shifted to another page. I'm going to do it again just to show you. Select a connection point, go to another page. These are now yellow, meaning there's something selected on another page ready to be patched on this page. It's basically like holding the cable, the patch cable. So I'm not going to patch it now. I'm just going to review where the input ports are. Okay, input reverb is right here. So let's take this sound, patch it there. Okay, let's take this sound again and patch it there. So now we have patched this sound and sent it to both the right and the left of the reverb. Epic. Yeah. Let's go back here and say, well, that was great, but it was too much. So how do we select it to, to make it send less of that? Well, we could do it in many ways, of course. One way is to select how much of this stomp box is going to affect the level control. So let's select this connection again and say, well, send a little less of that stomp box and like make it not go as high. <laughs> yeah. Cool, this is advanced stuff. It's pretty cool, right? Now, I'm going to save this. Save again. This is uh, this is getting too good to lose, you know. You've got to be careful and save it. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, um, I want to show you just briefly how we can use a, a sequencer. Okay, let's go to an empty page. Page number two, zero, one, two. I'm gonna show you the sequencer. Um, the sequencer is a control module, I, I think, isn't it? Oh, it's right there at the top, sequencer. So the sequencer could be a lot of steps and also a lot of tracks. Let's see, a number of steps. Let's do eight steps. How many tracks? Let's say we want one, two, three. Yeah, three tracks. One for controlling the... I, what I want to do now is control the synth with a sequencer and simultaneously being able to play it. This is kind of advanced, but it doesn't have to be that advanced. So I'm going to have three, three um, tracks here. One for controlling the frequency of the first mm, first oscillator, another track for controlling the frequency of the second oscillator, a third track for controlling the gate of the synth. Okay, 
And also I want a jack here to be able to restart. And now it's looping. Yeah, okay, done. So this is a sequencer. Uh, it's got many steps here. And this is the gate in. This is the one you've got to send a little trig there in order to make the sequence advance. So let's do that. Let's do that through, uh, let's see, uh, control module LFO. Yeah, that, that, could be, that could work. Square. Okay, so this, I'm going to use this little sequence, <laughs> this value here, connect it to the sequencer and in order to make the sequencer run. I'm going to turn up the speed there. Okay, so it's running. And still, everything else is still here, you know. Yeah, so it's all available. Okay, so the sequencer, how does it work? These are the different tracks of the sequencers. A sequencer track could be either a CV, which is a value, it could be a gate, or it could be something called a ratchet. A gate is on-off, ratchet is a retrigging, uh, yeah, a retrig gate, trig. I want two CV signals, so this is set to be CV, the second one is set to be gate now. By selecting it and pressing here, we can change it. Okay, now it's a CV. The last one, I want that to be a gate. Okay. So, let's first of all, let's just press some gates here. So this is now a, a little sequence, right, with gates. I want to um, send this gate to the envelopes. Let's send it to both of them. Okay, I'm going to send the gate to the second envelope. Yeah. So I'm going to just stop the, the envelope for now. So, so this is generating, uh, like, it's firing off the envelopes now. Let's say that this one, I'm going to put different values here, note values in the sequencer. It doesn't have to be note values. If I press this, it's, it's this free value instead of uh, a tonal value. So let's say we put, put some values in here. Okay, the <laughs> envelope is still running just very, very slowly. I'm just going to make it very random and see what it sounds like. Okay, so a bunch of different values, very low values uh, in this track. So this is going to connect to the oscillator's uh, frequency. Okay, let's see what happens now. So now we've got one track controlling the CV, uh, the frequency of, of one of the oscillators. Now I'm going to take the second track, also enter some random, um, some random values here. No tonal values, maybe. There you go. Yeah, it's still running just very slowly. Okay, so now I'm going to send this. CV message to the other oscillator and to change the frequency. Okay, so let's uh, run it. Thank you. 
So this is Zoya. I, I hope you really appreciate taking like a deeper and deeper and deeper step into the Zoya and the mindset of how modular works and uh, how you can go from something simple as a reverb pedal to something like self-playing uh, synthesis stuff. And I think this is so cool. This is like a really uh, versatile platform really. It's not just a, a little um, you know, effect box. It's a versatile platform. So if you're interested in this, keep an eye out on my channel. I'm going to use this a lot in a lot of different situation, not just for, uh, for um, having like a little effect here and there, but you can do some really elaborate stuff. So congratulations and press effects for finalizing this amazing platform. And I've been really happy to be part of the beta group. And uh, it's been a very healthy discussion about the features and how it should be, uh, you know, tight as tight as possible to the release so cool Zoya by Empress Effects um, compliments to Steve especially Steve who is like one of the masterminds behind this and the rest of the team uh, at Empress Effects you you've been like absolutely killer yeah cool well uh, if you enjoy this uh, uh, and you value the work that I do here on YouTube, like tutorials like this and uh, uh, interviews with, with people in the industry and all of that, please consider supporting me at Patreon. It's a lot of help for me. And if you don't want to do something monthly, you can go to my web store and buy my sample patch and, and patches. And I'm going to shortly start to develop patches for the Zoya as well. And so that keep an eye out on my web store for future Zoya packs there as well. And also, yeah, perhaps you like the t-shirts that I make. Uh, I like them. So <laughs> chances are that maybe someone else does too. Uh, cool. Well, it's been a pleasure hanging out. I hope you, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I certainly did. So peace out, everyone. Stay curious. Ask questions. Explore. Don't be afraid to fail. With modulars, it's it's through failure you find new ways of working. So don't be afraid to fail with the Zoya. <laughs> it's that's what's uh, gonna make you find new paths to explore. So thank you for watching, and hope to see you soon again. Peace. <laughs>